Hope you guys had a great holiday and you got to spend some time with your family. It's New Year's, so you know what that means. It's time to start our plan. I hope you're ready to get in the best shape you've ever been in entering your hunting season. It's going to be an awesome eight months and we're going to make tons of progress. I want you to think of a bad experience you've had where being in better shape would have benefited you hunting. For me, it was last year. We were at camp, shooting arrows at 60 yards at target. We couldn't find one, so we went and looked for it. Um, amongst the time we spent looking for it, we heard some bulls bugling up the hill from camp. So we ran back to the truck, we got our stuff. Me and my dad split up, he went one way, I went another way. I literally sprinted up this hill. I'm talking like all out sprint. I was running uphill. And that was a steep hill too. It was really thick timber. I was jumping over logs and dodging tree branches and finally got to where I could hear the bull bugling about 80 yards from me, so I started to slow down. I was just so out of breath. It took me so long to compose myself that I didn't even realize that I was kind of at a dead end. I had big down trees all around me. I couldn't make any more progress without making a ton of noise. So I had to hear the bull walk by without even seeing him at probably about 40 to 50 yards. Once he passed, I kept going again. I was still tired. I was out of breath. And I jumped a cow. She was about 30 yards away. I didn't even see her. I was trying to catch my breath, trying to recuperate. Didn't even see her there. So my cardio was a little bit better. I could have got up there. I could have been composed. I could have been ready. I could have been mentally prepared to make a stock and potentially get a shot. So I want you to think of a personal experience that you've had where being in better shape would have benefited you in the woods. Well, let's talk cardio benefits while we're there. Obviously we have the stalking part where you know if you spend a long day in the woods walking around it becomes a lot more d difficult to stay quiet as your lower body and your upper body fatigue so having better cardio endurance, better muscular endurance, will allow you to be quieter for longer. If you're hiking, you know, five to ten miles to get to where you're gonna hunt, you still have energy when you get there if your cardio shape is good. Muscular strength obviously comes into play with the pack out, you know, elk are heavy, heavy animals. And it takes some strength to get them out without completely wiping yourself out. Another point that people don't tend to think about with muscular endurance is holding awkward positions. If you're in close on an elk and they've got you pinned and you need to hold a position, maybe your feet are split over a log. Maybe your one foot is up on a log. You can't move, otherwise you'll bust them. So. You need to have the muscular endurance to maintain your balance, maintain that still position so you don't spook your elk. Flexibility will also tie in with that. If you're holding an awkward position and your leg starts falling asleep, that's not good. If you're kneeling down and your butt cramps up, you're not going to stay kneeling down for very long. You're going to have to have to get up. Actually, that's happened to my dad and he was in close on a bull, he was on his knees getting ready for a shot, and he got a cramp in his leg. So, what do you do? You gotta move. It's impossible to stay still when you've got a cramp, trust me. It's, it's not gonna happen. Shooting. How long before your form breaks down when you're shooting at the range? Is it 50 arrows? Is it 100 arrows? all personal. The longer you can hold your perfect form, the better it's going to get. You'll hear people say, practice makes perfect. Well, for this eight months, we're going to completely throw that out the window. Our new motto is, perfect practice makes perfect. If your form is 
100% on point when you're practicing, that's going to carry over into the woods. When you've got a great big bull screaming at you 10 yards away, you don't want to have to think about your form. You want to watch what he's doing and be able to make a perfect shot. So throughout this program, we're going to cover all of this. And I think you'll be very, very surprised at how fast you progress throughout this eight months. So let's get into what I want you to do for this first month. All right, so throughout these first four weeks, we're going to call this our assessment month. So we need to see where we're at in order to see where we're going. So first thing I want you to look at is your cardio endurance. And there's a couple ways you can do that. If you've got access to a gym, what you can do is get on the treadmill, put the incline all the way up to 15%, put the speed at 3.5, and just walk until you can't do it anymore, until you run out of breath, or you hit 30 minutes, whatever comes first. If you get to 30 minutes at 3.5 and 15% incline, that's good. Now we can work on some of the finer tuning points of that. If you don't have access to a gym, find a hill, <clears throat> go up to the mountains, whatever it may be, and get a brisk walk. If you can hold that brisk walk in that same tempo for 20 minutes straight, then you're in good shape. If not, keep track of how long it takes before you have to stop for a breather. Same thing for the treadmill. Physically write it down so we have something to refer back to. For muscular endurance, again, we've got two options. If you've got access to a gym, your options will be a little bit more diverse. If you don't, we want to try a few different exercises to see where we're at. And these are all really basic exercises. Number one is a push-up. How many perfect form push-ups can you do? Number two is a sit-up. How many perfect sit-ups can you do? Then we want body weight squats. So not holding any weight, we just want to see how many squats we can do. And if you have any questions on squat form, I'll put a video out later on that as we go through. I'll put that up this week as well so we have that to refer back to. I'll demonstrate all these exercises that we need to try out. Another one is pull-ups. If you've got a bar around the house or you know something that you can try your pull-ups on, that's great. If not, then don't worry about it. We can do a different exercise in a row, which I'll also demonstrate on that video that I'll put out. Next thing I want you to do is get your bow, get your arrows, head out to the range. I want you to shoot a hundred arrows. If you've got 10 arrows, that's 10 rounds. If you've got five, that's 20 rounds. So I want you to pay attention to when your form starts to break down, when you start to get shaky, and again, write it down, write everything down. We want to note our progress so we can look back on it a month from now and see how far we've come. And the last thing that we need to figure out is our nutrition. So I want you to ask yourself three questions. Number one, how many meals do you eat per day? Number two, is one of those meals breakfast, meaning a meal first thing in the morning, 30 minutes after you wake up? And number three, how many of your meals include a protein source, meaning meat, fish, nuts, dairy, eggs, those are a few protein examples. So how many of your meals include a protein source? A couple other questions that you need to ask is how many times per week do you drink alcohol? Another one, how much water do you drink per day? A good gauge of that is to fill up a one gallon jug with water and pour it out into a glass or pour it into a water bottle. See how much water you're drinking. Ideally, we should be about a gallon a day, and that's going to do a lot for our body, a lot of good things. And if you start doing that, you'll really feel and see a difference in your body. You'll have more energy, your metabolism will speed up, your immune system will strengthen. So there's tons of benefits to the water. So definitely see how much water you're drinking. A couple other last things to do 
jump on a scale and see how much you weigh. Write that down. It's really not important because we're going for more of a performance benefit rather than a look. But as we progress through the plan, your look is going to change. Your clothes are going to start fitting different. You are going to gain muscle and you are going to lose body fat. So having that starting number for your weight is going to be important to kind of track where you came from. Well guys, that's it for this week. Stay tuned for that exercise video. I'll put that out tomorrow. Um, other than that, I hope you're excited because I'm excited to get in the best shape of my life. Following this plan is also going to make the time go by quicker. As of today, we have about nine months until hunting season. Let's make the most of it. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the future videos. Shoot straight.